All right, two-dimensional arrays. Uh, in Unit 8 on RuneStone, for reasons I'm not exactly sure about, um, the pages are broken up a little bit differently. All of 8.1 is actually going to be broken across two pages, one that goes from 8.1.1 to 8.1.4, and then one goes that 8.1.5 to the end. I'm going to organize the videos that way just so that you are reminded of that <laughs> when you jump into it tomorrow, because it'll look a little different. Maybe that'll change in the future and I'll regret this decision, but you never know. Um, the key thing that you really need to know as a teacher about 2D arrays is they behave just like 1D arrays. In all the ways that they are tricky, APCSA doesn't cover, and honestly are not the most important things to learn. So there's actually a lot of stuff in here that you can completely skip. And I'll give you some hints about that and a few extra tips and images to help you with your students. So the beginning of 8.1.1 is great. Um, introduces, you know, that we've got, we're bringing back an image we've seen before, which is a row of lockers that we use to introduce arrays. And we say, you know what? If you are used to the way at least some uh, lockers are done in US schools, there can actually be rows and columns. There's like high, medium, and low, and they're stacked on top of each other and all that sort of good stuff. So this is a really cool image about that. And the key thing is, as they say, you know, you can actually only hold one item in each array element. You can't smash things, you know, as many things into it as you want, but same idea. Um, and they did point out that there's a lot of really good um, game related and, and real world related things that have 2D arrays, like battleship and bingo games and spreadsheets and theater seats and classroom seats and pixels in a picture, which we're gonna work on later. This section on array storage, really students do not need to know. Um, APCSA and really much any intro programming courses, we always assume row major order for um, array storage. If you don't know what row major order is, it doesn't matter. Um, that's okay. And let me tell you, I used to work in supercomputing. I think maybe once I worked in college ma column major order. I'm not even sure that happens anymore. So anyway, I'm just telling you, the only diagram that's important here is this one that I have a check mark by that basically says, you know, your rows are zero and one, they're, you know, on the left, and your columns are columns zero, one, two. Row major order is just basically the same way we all draw things. So, and that maybe an extra helpful image that relates to that one is to go back to the uh, the lockers and be like, ah, so here is the indexes or the rows and the columns for that locker. So maybe you want to have kids do that and draw that, see if they can remember it starts at zero, right? This entire section, nope, don't need it. You do not need to know how they store it underneath in the computer. We don't even, we don't teach our kids this in university. Nope, skip it. Um, but in that section, there are some good problems that you can do five of them that are really, really cool. And they basically say, hey, here's a two dimensional array of things. Click on all the values in the row at index two. Did you remember? Oh, we don't start counting at one, we start counting at zero, I'm sorry. Just mentally change that to a zero in your head, right? So all the ones at two, zero, one, two. Those are the ones you would want to click on. All right, 8.1.4. Again, this is a fine paragraph. It's all correct, it's all true. Students need to know this, but basically you could just say 2D arrays work just like arrays. ta dum dum The only thing I'll say here is they're asking like, if you create a 2D array but you don't actually instantiate it, if you just declare it, it will have the value null in it. Yeah, nah, we don't really care that much. And I don't think that would be tested. So there you are. Um, but this one could use a few more visuals, I think, to really make it clear. So let's say we declare an element or a, an array, a 2D array called ticket info of new integers 2, 3, and a seeding chart of new strings 3, 2. How are those different? Ah, well, here's the images you'd want to see. Ticket info is going to be two rows and three columns, and seating chart is going to be three rows and two columns. Either way, they actually both have the same number of elements in that, and they say how many elements are in ticket info. The key is you multiply two times three, six. And again, if you're drawing the boxes, it's pretty obvious. Finally, um, in this particular code uh, activity, they're just basically having you run the code to show how do you print out you know, when we had a 1D array, we had the length, right? And that was how many elements were in our array. Well, now if you print out length, that's going to tell you how many rows there are. And if you print out ticket info sub zero, so like the first element, its length, that's going to tell you how many columns. And kids will forget this. And it's 
and they'll be like, how, why, why does it, don't, don't understand the why, okay? Just give them the following cheat to remember it. This is how we all do it. For the shorter instruction, that gives you the shorter word. Rows is a shorter word than columns. So ticket info dot length, that's shorter than ticket info sub zero dot length. Okay, so that gives you, that's short, it gives you the number of rows. The longer instruction, ticket info, put, ticket info sub zero dot length, that gives you columns. Now you could say, why use sub zero? Is, could I use sub one? Could you, in this case, in an AP CSA, you can, because they always guarantee that the, the uh, two dimensional array is, in the, is a rectangle, okay? It's not gonna be something called a ragged array. Again, we hardly ever use those, don't worry about them. Um, even if you're not teaching APCSA, just stick with the rectangles, okay? So you can use any number, it turns out, that's a legit um, index into your row. So uh, ticket info sub zero, just tell them to always use sub zero and that'll get them the columns. So again, shorter gives you rows, longer gives you columns.